Hello, welcome to the PPM channel. In this video we're going to explore some techniques for executing a Microsoft Project Schedule Health Check uh, aligned to the NDIA's Planning and Scheduling Excellence Guide which is downloadable from our website uh, and or the, the NDIA website. This document was developed initially um, as the originating organization would suggest um, for the use by DOD prime and subcontractors undertaking projects on behalf of the US government um, but really is, is applicable to project planning and scheduling across all industries. This is the document that we'll use as our uh, basis for reference uh, the Planning and Scheduling Excellence Guide Release 2 2012 before going any further, I just wanted to display the copywriting notice here so that we're comfortable that sharing and distributing this information uh, is not infringing any copyright laws. So you can pause the video at this point if you want to, to read this in full. As you'll see, particularly if you've chosen to download this document, it, it is quite lengthy, 200 plus pages, and it's not the intention for purposes of this video to go through the whole thing but to focus on a section that speaks specifically uh, to the health of a project schedule so here we are um, 10.2 schedule health assessment that's where our focus is going to be um, and it starts with some preamble about what we actually mean by schedule health and then on the following page there is a table that lists some of the items that, that could be an issue when putting a project schedule together. The idea is that we'll take each of these in turn and have a look at the techniques in Microsoft Project that we could employ to identify uh, these potential issues. So here we go then, starting from the top down. Uh, for part one of this series, we're going to check for tasks missing logic that is predecessors and successors. Uh, the rationale for this being that activities should have dependencies assigned in order to provide uh, meaningful forecast dates and total float or slack. And that this metric should be expressed as the number of tasks without dependencies or the number of tasks without dependencies as a percentage of the total number of tasks in the project. Just as a footnote to this project, can't of course tell us if the dependencies that we have set are correct or not. Um, what we're looking for here are activities which are isolated from the remainder of the activity network and situations where potentially the assignment of activity dependencies has been missed. So here's my little example Microsoft project plan which as we can see uh, has some dependencies set. We have uh, predecessors listed here and we can see the links on the Gantt chart. I'm just going to repurpose this column to show successors as well. Um, so what we're looking for are activities which don't have any predecessors or successors set and which are therefore isolated from the rest of the activity network and there's one such example here. Now for small projects it's not too much of a deal to go through manually and check for this but for projects where we have many thousands of activities um, this can be quite time consuming so what we're looking for is a quick way of identifying these isolated activities. To do this I'm going to create a new filter so I click on the filters drop down new filter and I'm going to call this isolated tasks the fields that we're interested in are predecessors where this is equal to blank and successors also equal the blank. I'm going to show the related summary rows, apply this and that will filter my activity list to show just those that uh, have no predecessors or successors. You can also use this filter as a highlight, of course. So click on the, the highlighting drop down, isolated tasks, and that will apply the, the highlighting 
um, to those activities. Again, I have no predecessor or successor. So to get visibility of isolated tasks, it's pretty straightforward by way of using the filters um, and applying that as, as highlighting as well. To, to get some metrics, we're going to need to do some counting. And to do this, I'm going to use a couple of custom fields. I'm going to use custom field number one, which I'm going to rename as count of isolated tasks. And into this, I'm going to put a formula. I'm going to say if predecessors equals nothing and so Accessors equals nothing. Return a value of one to this field, else give me a zero. And we'll click OK. It'll give me a warning um, indicating that any existing information in this custom field will be, will be deleted, and that's OK, that's fine. And then for the roll up, I'm going to uh, choose the sum option so that at the project summary level I'll get a total of all isolated tasks within this project and I'll click OK. The next step then is to display my custom field with formula in the table so I'm going to add a new column choose number one and that's telling me that I have a total of two isolated tasks with no predecessor or successor in this project and if I just apply the filter for isolated tasks I should see that those two activities those two tasks without a predecessor or successor have the number one uh, in my custom field and is summarized up to a total of two for the project. In order to get my percentage metric for the percentage of isolated tasks in this project uh, I'm going to need to also count uh, the number of tasks in total so I'm going to use another custom field I'm going to use number two rename this count of all tasks and in the formula I'm just going to return the number one for each task And for my summarization, again, I'm going to sum up to the project summary level. So I get a, a, a total for all the activities in the project. And then I can add this column too to my table. Add new column. Number two. Count of all tasks, telling me I have 34 tasks in this project. I now have my count of isolated tasks. I have my count of all the tasks in the project. So we just need one more custom field to calculate the isolated tasks as a percentage. So we'll use number three. Isolated tasks as a percentage. Uh, in the formula then, it's going to be number custom field 1 divided by custom number field 2 times 100 to give us the percentage that's okay and for the summarization in this case I'm going to use the formula at each summary level to get the desired result and then I'll just add this number three and it tells me that I have 5.88% of my activities in my project are in fact isolated meaning there are no predecessors or successors so this is quite a low number and would probably pass muster at any surveillance or audit event providing of course I could justify uh, why the tasks that are isolated do not require predecessors and successors in the context of the schedule. Okay, that's it for isolated tasks. Hope that was useful. 
When we come back, we'll look at the next two items on the list, the use of leads and lags. Look forward to seeing you there, and bye for now.